Welcome. Four M six Darth Maul and the Qui Gon. So um, uh, here we go. Um, so I'm actually sort of just going through the video here, and we'll just try to make sense of it with you all. Um, so let's do that. Here we go. So um, we, we've got, um, as uh, I think there's a missing dynamic there, actually, because it sort of crescendos to brought in and comes back down again. Um, so there should be one there. Um, obviously, the, the choir whisper, uh, um, as well. I used to think it was Rasabar because the T's are very sort of sibilant um, on, the, uh, on the recording. Um, anyway, there's not much going on here. We've just got a semitonal um, thing going on, which is very high uh, in the violins, um, a sort of uh, synth explosion and then a tam-tam coming in. Um, and then we've got the trombones coming in with a sort of non-motivic, uh, a non-light motive theme. <laughs> So I'm just going to sort of try and take it apart here. I will should have spaced that out slightly. Um, so I've got what we've what I've called the fight theme. So it's not really a theme that's sort of revisited particularly in the rest of the film, but often a cue will have the same, um, you know, a, a particularly identifiable theme, but it's not one that's repeated elsewhere. Um, so we've got this kind of quite distinctive rhythmic uh, figure. Uh, except it's all in block chords. Um, and this sort of technique I was um, sort of reminded me of things like the um, Shostakovich Piano Concerto in F uh, and also Rachmaninoff's Symphonic Dances as well. So a similar thing uh, could be found here. Um, here we go.
such a fantastic piece of music. It really is the symphonic dances, absolutely wonderfully, wonderfully played as well. Um, but that idea of block chordal static homophonic chords, which are all harmonized differently, is quite common um, in that sort of early 20th century or mid 20th century repertoire. Um, and here we've got a good example of it where everything is block chordal, mostly in second inversion chords apart from the stabs at the end. Uh, slightly different in the second bar of that figure. Like that. There's sort of a rare diminished um, seventh chord there. And there's another one coming up. Um... Ah, can't play it. <laughs> it's because I've done something very silly and put G sharps instead of A flats and things like that, where it's actually A flat minor. Going to G minor. Um, so that is that. And basically, um, I mean, some of this was orally dictated because I think it was changed in the session. Um, that bar was um, written as 5-4. It's been truncated to 3-4. Um, and we've got an extra bar in here which wasn't written, which I've just sort of tried to basically gobble together from uh, listening to it a lot of times. And then we've got sort of some times where he just gets rid of the triad entirely. It's kind of, I don't know whether that's something that um, it, it just seems peculiar to him, but I think it's it just gives it a slightly stark quality, but only for four beats. It's just a way of varying uh, material, I guess. Yes, I can see that it sort of punctures, uh, punctuates rather, the, the end uh, few notes. And then we've got this sort of large dominant into C minor. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, the harmony is actually reasonably straightforward to follow. Um, at this point. So we've got, um, you know, harmony here, A flats, first inversion chords, uh, with the horns coming up, and then we've got sort of G um, augmented chord, um, uh, G sharp minor, but with a, an A sharp in the bass, uh, with um, our sort of little chromaticisms, and then Uh, a dominant where we got Qui-Gon's theme which we can see in the horns, bassoons, trumpet, four and cor anglais. And then it shifts up a semitone to E flat as well. But I'll just take it back slightly. So we've got four different strands here. Uh, we've got Qui-Gon's theme which is here. We've got the previous fight theme Uh, which is kind of similar to the stuff that we had before. Uh, basically just sort of quavers, uh, starting on the offbeat. Um, that's also replicating the trombones an octave lower. And then we've also got, um, so this is Qui-Gon's theme also on the strings, all of the strings playing the melody. Then we've got this sort of scalic fudge, I've called it, <laughs> which is just counterpoint. which follows broadly the chord scheme of what we've got. Um, so there are a few uh, mostly chord, you know, chords in the scale of C minor or the scale of G. Um, in this case, it's um, sometimes it's sort of he shifts into a sort of slight octatonic with A flat and various other bits and pieces going on as well. And then we just got the bass line as well, which is the, the last sort of element of the counterpoint. It's quite complicated, really. Um, he's got four strands going on, but you don't really notice it because of the mixing. So just exactly the same, it's just with more horns. And then he changes it right at the end. Um, and then we've got this um, little uh, dyadic harmony uh, again in the contrabassoon, double bass, and tuba and trombones. So 
So this is the sort of, as the ship descends to rescue Qui-Gon, this heroic theme enters. Everything is sort of cascading as well. I like that, where he's got sort of, um, you know, fourth trumpet, then third trumpet coming in, then the first trumpet coming in. I think actually it's third, second, then first. With Morris Murphy on the first trumpet there. Um, I love this little sort of little reference to uh, the Star Wars theme where it sh would have normally gone. Just a little touch of Mativic Link, which I think is just fabulous. And I love how Williams it must be purposeful. There's just no doubt about that, I think. Um, and then we've got this uh, quintal harmony with everything in uh, everything in fourths and fifths. Um, it's a massive horn uh, bit going up there. Uh, which kind of similar from the material that we've had before. A lot of it is, um, you know, either chromatic, but in this case, it's definitely octatonic. There we go. Uh, it's just the first four notes, what we call 0134. Uh, o being C, 1 being D flat, uh, E flat, and then 4 is E natural. Um, so then we've got sort of synth trombones, just to give them a bit of a breather because they're coming in on this G-sharp minor chord a bit later on. You can definitely tell tell when the, the actual trombones, the tuba, perhaps comes in there. In fact, actually, it's not tuba at that point. suddenly a relaxation of all of that sort of eventfulness um, and often first inversions are used to do that um, so the added notes are the b and the uh, e as well to this sort of uh, f chord uh, but actually it's it's more of an a minor um, ninth chord Uh, I think, probably. Um, so, yeah, um, a, a wonderful bit of harmony. Um, and, uh, of course, the texture decreases at that point as well. So G-sharp minor with an added ninth. So now Qui-Gon's theme, but in 3-4, but then in 4-4. Four, four. So I'm just going to play that without talking. Absolutely amazing. The, the 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 thing that really struck me is he's gone from D sharp minor, E flat minor, really, but D sharp minor. What a horrific key to play in. Um, and he's gone to F major. So it's that sort of shift there, uh, minor third shift, really. Um, but it's just remarkable how he actually gets there, which is why I I put um, a little bit of a a sort of bonus bit at the end uh, just to sort of follow it as closely as possible um, um, so just one shift from the A sharp to the B but what was interesting is how the F sharp is prolonged and the D sharp is prolonged and eventually they're cancelled out um, which is around about this period here but it's such smooth voice leading. Um, there we go. D sharp, uh, D sharp minor with an E sharp. D sharp minor. Descending. And here is the change. That change is remarkable. Everything is being shifted by semitone at that point. And then with the added F, a sort of Lydian F. And then it actually goes into D minor, which is really extraordinary. Um, 
So let's just play that again. Here we go. And that's nice, actually. He ends up on the C, another fifth of the root. Um, and it's not really a second version, it's just a, a dominant pedal. But he, it enables him to then change key. Uh, which is remarkable, really, if we just take those two lines. That's the horn coming in. With a neutral uh, fourth. And again, uh, going uh, entering on a second inversion in D minor, it should really have an A in the bass, but sometimes I find it easier when I just, I know it's going to that key. So it's more of a key rather than a chord at that point. And then it goes into the D minor. I love that. Uh, we'll do that next uh, time I talk to you. But um, what a lovely cue. It's just that there are lots of sort of interest there. There's a bit of action going on, which isn't octatonic really up until uh, a very specific bit right at the very end uh, with the, the horns, da -da 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 -da, um, which is here. But well, we only know it's octatonic in in the second phrase of that, um, and all of these sort of block chordal um, harmonizations, which are almost all in second inversions, pretty much all of them are, and then the occasional root position, the occasional first inversion, um, and in terms of the relationship between them, they're mostly moving in step. Um, it's really extraordinary. Um, It's just he, he changes things around so beautifully. It really changes that sort of almost Bruckner at that point. In terms of really changing the the, the direction of where things are going. You know, it's sort of jumping around huge amounts. I've just made that bit up, but you can see how that that relates. Um, there's a wonderful piece called Eccles Cerdos Magna, um, or maybe it's Magnus, I can't remember, but it's by Bruckner, one of his choral pieces with trombones, this instance, um, which I think we did in one of the one of the videos a while back. Um, but it's just sudden changes of chord with really unexpected um, sequences. Um, here it just moves so quickly that you can't really sort of tell what the chord is. It's just block chordal harmonisation, um, almost like a sort of big band, uh, but just done in a completely different way. Um, so, yeah, a remarkable cue um, and uh, one which, I, again, I hope you've um, enjoyed. Um, so that's me done for the week and we'll be uh, visiting the next queue next week. Hope you enjoyed it.